You've heard identity is the new perimeter, right? I don't agree with that. Identity is the new network. We must oh, yeah. start okay. saying that. It yeah. is not about federated identity and multi-factor authentication. That is just such a small piece of the puzzle. You've got to start thinking about from a cloud native perspective that identity is the new network. Nothing can live, breathe, or function in a cloud native environment without the identity fabric. It is the conduit with which everything breathes and communicates. We need to educate the market and the world that you've got to start thinking about segmenting the public cloud the same way that you did on-prem. But we don't segment at the network layer. We segment across the access fabric. This episode is for everyone who's been trying to solve least privilege in the cloud world. If you haven't tried doing least privilege, you may have tried it in on-premise. You may have or tried and making an attempt of it in cloud. But if you know what I'm talking about, least privilege is probably one of the hardest things to do for identity in the cloud concept. Specifically in 2024, when we have multiple AWS accounts, multiple subscriptions for Azure, multiple Google Cloud accounts, and probably some other cloud provider out there as well, all either sharing identity or having their own set of identity that they're dealing with. But least privilege overall has been challenging for a lot of people. And in this conversation, I had Jeff from Sonray Security, and we were talking about the challenges of doing least privilege and how you can flip your approach to perhaps least privilege the other way. Instead of trying to go at it from, hey, I have resolved permission problems. Instead of looking at the problem that I have to just go through all these identities and reduce your permission, there's a better way to look at this. And that's what Jeff and I talk about in this episode. If you enjoy this episode and you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes, I would really appreciate if you can drop us a review rating. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to like the video so we know you want us to create more content like this. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode of Cloud Security Podcast and enjoy this episode and I'll talk to you soon. Welcome to another episode of Cloud Security Podcast. Today, we're talking about least privilege. For this, I've got Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Super excited. Not, I'm excited as well. Maybe... To start off with, could you share a bit about yourself and what got you into the whole cybersecurity space, man? Yeah, I've been in this space for, I feel old saying this, but 25 years, Ashish. I got started in this space back in 99 at what a lot of folks call the original internet security company in the world. Internet security systems was at ISS, mm -hmm. as, as a lot of folks still refer to it. Because I'm here in Atlanta, it's out of Atlanta. So that's where I got my start was ISS doing intrusion detection systems endpoint protection, vulnerability assessment, all that stuff, and supporting it. Like a lot of folks got their starts and careers in tech support. I stayed in the field and I have done, in summary, some form of pre or post sales, either engineering or leadership role for all of those years leading up to, uh, I've been here at Sunry now for four years. Prior to that, I was at Cisco for five years and I've been focused just on securing public cloud workloads for about seven years now. So I did wow. some of that at Cisco from an infrastructure perspective in the public cloud. And I've been focused on platform for the last four years since being here at Sunry. And topic today, least privilege. I'll be honest, it's not a favorite topic for a lot of people. And I think as someone who started his career in IAM, I probably know this better than anyone else. I want to leave it as soon as possible. It's not like username, password, clearly people, but privilege. How would you define it? And how would you say it's different for people from the on-premise world into the cloud world? How is that different? Yeah, I, it's so different. From the on-prem world, we focus on securing what all the time? The network, right? We've got to put in our firewalls. We've got to worry about network and endpoint protection and APTs and insider threats. And just because it was everything lived and breathed and functioned from an on-premise perspective back in the, the colo and data center days uh, across yeah. the network. Right. Fast forward to today, everything is flipped. I'm sure as many folks as you talk to, and you're like a celebrity, right? In this space, you've heard identity is the new trend, right? I don't agree with that. Identity is the new network. We must oh, yeah. start okay. saying that. It yeah. is not about federated identity and multi-factor authentication. That is just such a small piece of the puzzle. You've got to start thinking about from a cloud native perspective that identity is the new network. Nothing can live, breathe, or function in a cloud native environment without the identity fabric. It is the conduit with which everything breathes and communicates. So yeah, I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things that folks have to wrap their head around as it relates to the on-premise environment versus the public cloud. And on-premise, we could, everything was contained, like an Active Directory or maybe, maybe your, your secrets manager or your password management solution. And as it related to non-human identities, all we had to worry about was, you know, service accounts and windows or daemons yeah. on Linux boxes. But now we have identity proliferation in the public cloud because everything relies on identities 
to function. You even think about folks worried about securing VMs in the mm -hmm. public cloud. They don't think about that fact that VM can't function without accessing a role or a service principle or managed identity. Without that, it's dead in the water. So it's just a, it's a completely different mindset. And then I think another thing, Ashish, is ingress, egress. Back on prim days, we had just two ingress, egress points, right? Now there's thousands because every service opens the door to just more and more ingress egress points and i think that's where back in the on-prem days is we had to segment yes, that's where that's firewalls came into play we yeah, yeah. segmenting with our firewalls we plug into a customer's environment and we illuminate it today as it relates to segmentation everything is flat and that's frightening because everything can talk to everything and we need to educate the market in the world that you've got to start thinking about segmenting the public cloud the same way that you did on-prem but we don't segment at the network layer. We segment across the access fabric. Oh, I love that. And I also love the fact that to what you said, segmentation is not looked at the same way in cloud and maybe just cannot be because as much as yes, there's a network in cloud, but the important key element there is that if you don't have an identity, it doesn't really matter how many network segmentations you have, you can't access them anyways. So I think it's right. basically on a, almost a no brainer, but that makes me also think, are there any misconceptions or probably what are some of the concerns companies have with least privilege? Because I think, and there's a specific reason for me to go down the list privilege path, because I feel like as an IAM concept, people generally think, oh yeah, username and password, role-based mm -hmm. access control. But specifically around least privilege, do you find there are any misconceptions or things people carry on from the on-premise world that they probably should unlearn in the cloud world. From a misconception perspective, I, I think that one of the biggest things that is an eye-opener when mm. I speak to folks is I talk about cyber litter and cyber garbage. And if you think about role proliferation and identity proliferation in the cloud, they're not thinking about that. They're thinking that, hey, Bob or Jenny, they deployed this application six months ago or three years ago and they don't need it anymore or whatever. So they just turn down the workloads, right? Yep. What they left behind was with those identities. They weren't thinking about that, right? Because back in the day, what did we do? We just delete, we took the server, we unracked it, stuck yeah. it over in the corner, and that was it. That was your <laughs> risk landscape. Maybe close the hole in the firewall that was pointing to it. Yep. But now you've got all this cyber litter and cyber garbage that's left behind across the access fabric roles and like you said, I am identities and things like that. And so I think that's the first thing that folks need to be aware of is that it's insane the amount of leftovers, if you will, from projects past and teams past and employees past that you need to be thinking about because those are all identities with permissions to go do things that yeah. folks can assume, right? So I think that's the first thing. And then I think another thing is when it gets to least privilege in the cloud, folks need a strategy. And because this is so foreign to so many folks still, they don't really know where to start. So they start playing whack-a-mole. And I think that's super, super important. You need a strategy and you need to be able to really focus on the most egregious risk up front. I wouldn't say that you should start with applying least privileged policies to every single identity. That's whack-a-mole. You don't even know if these identities have access to anything. Mm -hmm. You need yep. the ability to illuminate the environment, understand what can talk to what from a relationship perspective. But I think the most important thing is they're not thinking about the fact that I can log into AWS or Azure, whatever right now, sheesh, and I can just start deploying things in different services. I can start deploying things in different regions. That's what you guys start thinking about. And that's what I've learned over the years here is we call it the permissions attack surface, focusing on the unused part of that attack surface, right? That's where you've got to reduce the risk. It's just this massive landscape, right, for the picking, especially yeah. if there's a new credential dump out in GitHub or something like that. And I can just log right into the dead center of your cloud right now. Yeah. And that's where that segmentation gets into play. It's super, super important that folks start to think about, okay, there's this vast part of my cloud, the moment I create these accounts that's unused, get yeah. rid of that, get that part of the attack surface off the table. So it's not even a conversation. Then you can start to focus on least privilege on the running part part of your cloud. So there, there's a yeah, method to the madness. Yeah. And I think it's an interesting term, permission attack surface management as well. Do you find other native services? Because I feel like what you've hit over there is an interesting one because I think these days, most people are multi-cloud. Most people have not just one account or one subscription. They have multiple subscriptions, multiple tenancies, multiple AWS accounts as well. Attack surface seems pretty wide. Is there anything natively available from the cloud provider to, to your point, exposing the permission 
uh, attack surface management? There is, and I know not a ding on the CSPs, right? Because they're doing their best to give customers and folks a stopgap, right? right? Some sort of capability there. But yeah, all three of the major cloud service providers, whether it's AWS, Azure, or GCP, they've got some limited capabilities for least privilege built in. In AWS, you have IAM Access Analyzer. GCP has a more direct capability that's just showing you used and unused permissions at a ratio right there on those individual identities. And then Azure has what I would say is the most uh, mature mm -hmm. set of tools as it relates to visibility into least privilege through what's Entra ID now, which was Azure Active Directory. So there yep. is some native tooling there, but here's the thing. It's just showing you used and unused permissions on an individual identity, okay? So that's the first thing. It's just a visibility component. The second thing is it starts to get really weak as we talk to non-human identities versus person or human identities, okay? So that's the second thing. But I think the biggest concern that I've learned over the years is that those tools lack context. They can't tell you if that identity is a dead end or if that identity is key to a crucial lateral movement chain going from a workload through your entire cloud straight into the crown jewels, right? So it doesn't have that visibility there from a context perspective. And then a lot of the tools in this space, whether it's cloud native tools or third party Ashish, it's a visibility tool. It's not about yeah. action. It's just giving you more things that you have to then go research and fix because we're talking about deleting things. We're talking about removing permissions when we talk about least privilege. I always talk about this, right? It, it There's this fear. Mm -hmm. There's this paralyzation when you even bring up the phrase least privilege because <laughs> folks are scared. They don't know if they can delete this identity. It doesn't matter if it's a third-party tool telling them it's not being used in 30, 60, 90 days or a cloud native tool, right? Yeah. So there has to be a way to also address that fear. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter which where you're getting your information from a visibility perspective. So that's one thing that uh, I'm super excited that Sunry is innovating in that area. Would you say, to your point about each one of those cloud providers have some kind of an offering in terms of, hey, you can use nat native tool, but they only allow for visibility without the context. Do you find that going back to the challenge thing that we were talking about for people who are trying to solve this in their organization, least privilege, specifically talking about multi-cloud visibility, does that extend to other clouds as well? Or is visibility primarily, I'm AWS, I only care about AWS. And again, to what you said, we're not trying to, to say anything bad about any CSP. You know, the, I'm sure they're trying to do their best as well. It's a really complex environment to run data center, as a lot of us have tried this before. Do you find there is, a, in the way they're approaching it, does it extend to other clouds as well? Or is it just primarily for their own cloud provider? So the question is, like in AWS, does it give visibility into the other cloud providers as it relates to least privilege? Yeah. So that's where the story definitely starts to crumble <laughs> as it relates to the tools and their how comprehensive they are. And that's really where third-party tooling comes into play. So AWS doesn't really have any ability to provide visibility beyond its own native identities, has now IAM Identity Center, which is fantastic for single sign-on, those kinds of things. Um, but even that's focused just on AWS. GCP is the same, right? Yeah. So GCP is really focused on um, just showing you least privilege as it relates to their own native identities. And then Azure, they have, to my knowledge, what I would say is, is the only ability really to do cross-cloud right. into the other cloud service providers. But even then, you're going to find that they've invested very heavily on Azure, which is amazing. It's fantastic. But they are very weak when it comes to the other cloud providers. I think another thing, Ashish, that we have to think about is that this isn't just about, hey, there's a bunch of excessive permissions in the cloud and we have to go delete them. Or there's a bunch of unused identities and we have to go delete them. You've got to be thinking about ongoing maintenance, ongoing governance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's amazing that you've been able to delete these identities and I'm just left with what I need. But what yeah. if there's like a, a critical identity where a permission changes or someone nefariously access a break glass account when they shouldn't have. You need the ability to set tripwires around all of these things. You need context about whether or not this identity leads to a sensitive data container. Let me ask you this. How powerful would it be to tell the opposite side of the identity story? Meaning not these identities can access this piece of data, but start with the data. That piece of data, did you realize it has 46 different identities that can access it across 16 different accounts or subscriptions? The majority of those are non-person identities and it changes every day. What if you had that level of visibility, right? That's what folks aren't thinking about. Yeah. That's where I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about whack-a-mole. You've got to have the context to understand what these identities can do and touch. And that's where, seriously, all these cloud-native tools, they don't offer that. Would you say, because you mentioned single sign-on as well, a lot of people may think, of, hey, I've got single sign-on. I think I know exactly what Ashish's privilege is in Azure AD or Entra ID or whatever. Does that take care of least privilege or is that a misconstrued assumption there? It's, it's not misconstrued. 
Okay, so let's start with, I'm going to be on the record. That's always a good thing, okay? I don't want you, she's going and building an AWS cloud for me that has bunches and dozens or hundreds of IAM identities in it. Yeah. Talking about a mess, right? All with like inline policies versus managed policies, just everything that goes against best practices. Single sign-on is super, super important because it moves that prop. I need to go create 1,200 identities for my 1,200 employees that might be doing things in the cloud. What I can do is pare that down into a very specific finite set of roles, okay? That yep. role, they can all come in and assume that's the whole point in the role. And then you can give that role very specific permissions. What we have found though over the years though is that folks over provision that role from a permission stamp. So these 1200 users that can come in and share a role, they have too many permissions. What we find is we watch the role and then over six months, maybe that role has 300 permissions, but all of those users, they really only use about 30. So you need the ability to pare that down. And the other thing is you need the ability to really understand who's coming in and who's doing what, right? So you need the yep. logging, you need the tracking. And that's where I think the beauty of Azure Active Directory and AWS IAM Identity Center, they come into play is because they're giving visibility into who's coming in, who's actually leveraging that role, because maybe those 1,200 people don't need access to it to begin with. So it is beautiful, single sign-on that is, but you've got to be still thinking about it from a least privilege, a visibility, and a governance perspective. As you were saying this example, it hit me the fact that actually single sign-on and even least privilege for the matter has two layers to it as well. One is the layer that A, should Ashish even be able to access any of the cloud environments. That's another least privilege right there. Uh -huh. And the other part is also if Ashish is allowed to access the cloud and set, set cloud environment, what he or she should be able to do in that permission level. So there's almost two layers there as well, already adding to the complexity of just this. I'm curious, in the customer conversations you have, is there any common themes that come out in how people are addressing least privilege? Yes. So common themes, I would say the biggest one is the scale of the problem. It's not an identity problem. It's not an identity mess. The term I've used for years is that when we plug into the majority of mature cloud environments, it's an identity crisis. That's a big thing is that you have to understand that there's so many skeletons in the closet. There's so many admin level accounts. There's so many accounts that have things like I am pass role. They can just mm. give themselves admin level accounts. So things like that, again, before you even get to least privilege, there's that massive unused attack surface. So it's just visibility into how big the problem was. Obviously, I'm not going to say who, but I've been on so many calls over the years where we light it up like a football stadium in the middle of the night, illuminate everything. We show all the skeletons and the cockroaches and what do they want to do? They want to shut the door. But you can't, right? You can't be naive at that point, right? So I think the scale yeah. of the problem, right? But then I think the other thing is the fear and the paralyzation. There's this fear of if I delete something, it's going to break something and then I'm going to lose my job. Or I don't yeah. know if I can delete this identity because those folks are no longer here. That project was three years ago. I have no idea why they're there, right? So you have to go on this research project. Imagine doing that at scale. It becomes honestly, and this is a bold state, it becomes something that you cannot achieve. You can't achieve it. It becomes an impossible task with how time consuming it is, right? I think it almost makes me feel to what you said. We've been talking about the cloud native option giving you visibility. In terms of even starting this, to your point about parallelization, people might just be like, oh, damn, yes, that's great. How do I even start? What's the ground zero for anyone to even start doing? Even if they were to go, I, at this point in time, I want to start with native tooling first and go down this path and see how far can I go. Is there a starting point when there is already an identity crisis? Yes, there is a starting point. Okay. And that gets us back to not focusing on individual identities across all your accounts and getting them to least privilege and pairing them down to a certain level of permissions. The first thing that you have to do is you have to have visibility into the unused environment. I'm going to keep going back to that. Mm -hmm. Unused, 92% of the permissions fabric we find on average here is available, open, online, and not used as it relates to services, regions, and identities that are not being used, but exist yep. with grants and entitlements, but they're not used. 92%. That's fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Only 8% yeah. living and breathing and doing anything. There's a method to the madness. Number one, visibility in removing the unused attack surface. What you're left with is the running cloud, okay? So that's what you need for your applications to live and breathe. Now that you can focus on true least priv, stripping out the reads and the writes if that identity is truly shouldn't have that. And then looking at things like lateral movement attack paths. Okay, now I need these. This is how it's architected to live and breathe. I've gotten rid of everything unused, but... I actually have these insane, like privileged escalation, toxic combination scenarios that I don't want to tolerate that risk. So maybe there's a way that we could re-architect that a little better. Yeah. And then the things yeah. that have to be there, sheesh, 
whether those are break glass accounts, admin level accounts, whatever that might be that you've deemed, no, we need this has to function. Put those little trip wires around it. Be alerted to drift. Be alerted yeah. if someone accesses something that they should never access, either if it was nefarious or just an admin being lazy, right? You need those alerts. So there's that yep. governance component as well. But that's what we've learned over the years is that you can't just light it up and start saying, well, that has too many permissions or we need to get that one to at least focus on everything that's unused, then governing what's left and removing those more advanced identity risk scenarios and start where it matters with crown jewels, start in prod, start in sensitive. And we're, that's the other thing is that folks light up everything and they're worried about all these <laughs> least privileged problems in a sandbox. Who cares? <laughs> right? Focus yep. where it matters. Work your way out from there. Zero trust where it matters from a mindset, zero trust mindset from a privileged yep. perspective down to focusing on just things that are just super, super egregious in those less important zones. No, that's awesome. And any frameworks you recommend as well to SAP? Because you almost felt through what you said about this as well. If people were to choose the path of either getting a third party or doing it themselves, we have a starting point. Is there any known or maybe perhaps you a framework you recommend people can use as a maturity thing as they go down the path of doing least privilege in their organization, including some of the challenges they might face and some you've already called out. Yes. And, and this isn't, we're not reinventing the wheel here. So as it relates to frameworks, it gives you a guide. It gives you a starting point for years and years. That led to the birth of the CSPM movement, we'll call it, mm -hmm. cloud security yeah. posture management tools with just reporting on CIS benchmarks. PCI, the CSA's framework is the CCM, I think. So yeah. think about those frameworks five years ago, right? They were just saying, hey, you've got an exposed S3 bucket or you don't have logging enabled. They were very configuration. This is on, this is off kind of thing as far as what they reported on. Over the years, those frameworks, those standards, those organizations have gotten with the program that identity matters, least privilege matters. So they all have a component now. For years now, they've had a component for least privilege. I think that what matters is the tooling that you use to grade and score on that, because a lot of that kind of first gen or even all the cloud native CSPM stuff barely touches the surface of least privilege. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to be getting a false sense of security if you're grading and scoring on something that's not really focused and purpose built on also illuminating the permissions attack surface. And that's where you're going to get in trouble. And that's something that for years and years, I've always said to people, if you're not factoring in toxic combinations, unused identities, least privilege, lateral movement scenarios into your scoring, then you have a false sense of security, right? And that's something that we've been doing around here for years is factoring all of that into PCI reports, CCM, all that stuff. It is what it is. I say you get a better risk score. We're going to ding you a lot more, but it's going to tell you the truth. I love what you mentioned about the framework because some of them may not have matured with the time as well. Some of them are probably still stuck with misconfiguration. Some of them have yes. at least matured to the point that you have a sense of the fact that, yes, probably I need to look at identity because at the end of the day, that's what matters. It's funny. I think when, when people start the conversation with identity is most important and then you go to misconfiguration, you're like, didn't we just say identity is most important and you just switch the conversation to like misconfiguration? Here's the thing. And this is something that we have to take into consideration. Least privilege and visibility across the access fabric from a risk perspective for a lot of organizations over the years, it's been a nice to have, not a need. The need to have... That checkbox is my CIS benchmark, my PCI mm. report, right? Even though they may understand that it matters, the business requires that they focus on basic report or whatever just to, and again, those are great. They're exposing yeah. risk, but it truly is a, a one piece of the puzzle now. You cannot be secure by just doing CSPM reports anymore. You mm. can't. That is a part of a layered and defense strategy yeah. that you need to use. But you also need to be focusing on the permissions attack surface, identity, I am, and how folks can just log straight into the middle of your cloud and yeah. have their way. They don't have to worry about the kill chain. They don't have to exploit workloads. They don't have to do any of that mess. They just log in. I've been saying that for years. They just log in. For my laptop right here, a dead center in your cloud with the AWS or Azure or GCP command line with a credential that I just grabbed out of the latest GitHub data exposure. Yeah. And it happens every week. And I think maybe one more question is around the decision makers who are working on this. To what you said, right? Most of the years, least privilege has always been looked at like a good to have. Yep. Yeah. We'd love to be our back. Yep. Out, up there, definitely something which is important. But let's get to it after this feature is done. Or let's get to this after this is done. How would you see them talk about the ROI for this to the wider business or as in com communicating back up the ladder in terms of why is it important or why it would be beneficial for them to spend time doing least privilege? That's the challenge that I think has been just in front of my face and anyone that's trying to tackle this mess all these years. It's so hard to, mm. to show ROI with least privilege. 
because it's so hard to get there. It really is. And even when you get there, those 2,000 identities that took you 10 months to secure, at that 10 month mark, you have to start over because there's 2,000 more identities. Right? So <laughs> yep. it's just a yep. never ending, almost the whole insanity thing, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something different. So yeah. that's, again, what led us to create this cloud permissions firewall because you can remove 92% of that risk, that surface, in a matter of days safely with the world's first permissions focused firewall. And I know that sounds salesy, but this is a way that you can actually go up the chain and you can show the execs, check out what we just did. Watch that yep. risk trend go straight down and we did it safely without having to remove or delete anything, right? Because we've got this new capability in that's able to quarantine zombies, unused identities, that's able to disable unused services and parts of my cloud and just remove that entire part of the attack surface off the equation. That's what I love is the ability, the fact that we're now going to be able to go up to those execs and say, we're making big improvements in days instead of years. And where can people learn more about the entire space and cloud permission firewall, man? Definitely plug that in there as well. It's sunrysecurity.com. That's our website. Hit me up on LinkedIn. As you can tell, this conversation here with Ashish, I love talking about this stuff. It's what I've lived and breathed for the last four years is securing the identity fabric over here at Sunry. You go to the website, we offer a free trial. It's very easy, painless, hands-off. In a matter of days, you can start to get visibility into this permissions attack surface that we call it. No, that's awesome, man. And I'll drop definitely drop your LinkedIn as well as your link for Cloud Permission Firewall as well. But this was a pretty awesome conversation, man. A, I was definitely impressed by the amount of experience you shared in terms of where you come from and how much time you spend in this specific problem, how people can show ROI as well. So I appreciate you coming and sharing this with the audience as well. But thanks so much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate this. Oh, this is, it's been my pleasure. I really appreciate having me on, buddy. Thank you for listening or watching this episode of Cloud Security Podcast. We have been running for the past five years, so I'm sure we haven't covered every everything cloud security yet. And if there's a particular cloud security topic that we can cover for you in an interview format on cloud security podcast or make a training video on tutorials on cloud security bootcamp, definitely reach out to us on info at cloud security podcast or TV. By the way, if you're interested in AI and cybersecurity, as many cybersecurity leaders are, you might be interested in our system AI cybersecurity podcast, which I run with former CSO of Robinhood, Caleb Seema, where we talk about Everything AI and cybersecurity, how can organizations deal with cybersecurity on AI systems, AI platforms, whatever AI has to bring next as the evolution of chat, GPT, and everything else continues. If you have any other suggestions, definitely drop them on info at cloudsecuritypodcast.tv. I'll drop that in the description and the show notes as well so you can reach out to us easily. Otherwise, I will see you in the next episode. Peace.